um, if I actually switch off all the things that make the metal then the very first thing that I've got is um, base metal material which is this let's get back to here because we're kind of looking at this um, which is essentially a fill layer and it's got color metal roughness selected um, it's set to be metallic and its roughness is kind of somewhere in the middle so if I was to kind of try and recreate it uh, let's go into melting in fact let's just do it that way that would be easier so let me uh, go into here and I'm going to add a fill layer I'm going to put that into my metal folder metal 2 folder and at the minute my metal 2 folder doesn't have a mask on it so if let's let's just get this sorted out and then we'll sort the mask out so if I click on my fill layer essentially this is what you get you get um, a bunch of information um, and how many you know how many channels you want it to affect so do you want it to affect the height channel no in this case not do we want it to affect the normal map channel no uh, roughness yes metalness yes because it's metal um, and color yes um, So I can change the color by just selecting here. So I could go for a red, say. Um, I can change how, like whether it's metal or not. So it's not metal at the moment. Um, it is metal now. Um, so it's just basically whether it's dielectric or not. So it's how it deals with reflection of light, um, or how it bounces the light back. It really determines whether it looks metal or not um, and then the roughness is basically just controlling how reflective it is so we could have you know shiny plastic shiny metal a more rough metal finish or kind of rougher down to you know completely soft rough surface so that's more or less what we're that's what we're playing with and when we finished here I mean if you've not used substance much when you output the maps and um, they will just output these values based on where you've masked them into the appropriate maps it's all very clever um, so to create this sort of basic metal um, I went and actually looked at uh, a little bit of reference so I looked at this picture of metal uh, hand painted metal just to get some color values and just to get some ideas uh, of kind of how I might go about doing it and um, so I basically color picked from this um, which is easier said than done on one screen I've got two screens so um, that's how I'm doing it but essentially um, I drag this back onto my other screen you'll just have to imagine it um, if I click on here I've got a color picker and I can basically pick from any color anywhere so I'm just going to pick you can't see me doing this but I'm going to pick from my metal and I'm gonna get something like that so essentially for now let's just make up something so it's metal yeah and it has a roughness Sort of down here somewhere let's say so it appears sort of metallic but it's not really shiny or it's going to give too much information back or anything daft like that and um, so we'll go for something like that so that's our base and um, at this point it might make sense to create our mask and um, so in the way we did with the, this other metal and um, so I'm going to add a black mask uh, and this is just hiding the metal underneath um, so we can't see anything because it's all basically masked out and then right click on the mask add color selection pick the color there we go so that's us basically set up job done um, so the next thing 
in here is if we switch off metal to switch metal back on it's not confusing at all is it um, we have metal light so what we have is basically some detail on some lighter parts again looking at this this is what this has this is the structure it has this darkness and then it has kind of like lighter areas and then it has the edge detail and then the rust and they were kind of the things I was looking to do so um, that's what I've tried to put in so what we've got here is we've got some kind of larger edge detail um, that's designed to sort of feel like it's maybe been it's like maybe like hammered metal, but it's also maybe it's actually been done by hand. Um, and the way this is done is uh, relatively simple in that it's just a. And there it is. It's full, full whack. Um, it is just another fill layer. So this part here, it's another fill layer. If I, uh, I think, yeah, if I hold shift down and left click on this map uh, or this mask, it'll actually disable it so you can actually see what it is. So essentially, it's a slightly shinier, lighter gray. Yeah. And then all I'm doing is I'm masking it with this. Um, if you want to preview what your masks actually look like, if you hold alt down and click on the mask, it'll actually show you. So that's the mask. Um, so all the black areas isn't coming through and all the lighter areas it is coming through um, and obviously this is covering the whole thing we're just doing this bit here um, so yeah that's what we're getting uh, to get that effect and the way we've created that or the way I've created that is by basically if I click back if you just hit M to get back to your material I've basically got a bunch of stuff stacked together so what you can do is you can take effects and things like that and masks builders all sorts of stuff and basically create masks from different effects and uh, stuff like that so the start of this is basically a um, is using the mask editor so this is this is essentially a generator and what I'll do is I'll basically create the same thing up here uh, so in our own version of it so I switch him off go back to metal 2 um, so I've got my base layer if I create a new fill layer within there and again I'm just going to select a lighter grey from my image um, which is on my other, other, other monitor and um, that's fine and then I'm going to make it metallic obviously and I'm going to make it maybe even less rough just so we can see what it's doing so we should have a blend between these two things um, it may be that I want that to actually be more rough the one underneath to be less rough for now. So maybe make that a bit shinier just for a change see what that looks like the great thing about this is you can change all of this stuff um, so what I want to do is, as before, create a black mask. And you'll see that, I mean, this is basically the workflow for pretty much everything that's done here. There's, it's very repetitive. Um, then within that, I'm going to create, I want to build a mask. And there's different ways you can do that. Um, you can paint, you can add a paint layer and basically paint directly into it. You can add fills, so you can add color. Uh, you can add a generator, which is what we're going to do. Or you can add a filter. Um, which we'll, we're going to do as well. Um, the other thing you can do is down in here, there's a bunch of really useful smart masks, and these are all basically built from um, the generator that we that I'm, I'm going to use, but I'm going to do it by hand. Um, and they essentially, you can just drag these directly onto it. So say we want to use uh, concrete edges and try that out. We can just drop that onto the mask um, and it will create a an effect um, and then what we can do is we can go in and edit these things to get the effects we want 
Um, and if I just undo it, if I just pick any of these, uh, like, I don't know, surface worn, just drop that into there. And there you go. It's already started to create something. So there's a lot you can do with these and you can just go into it. You can go into them and open their properties up and start to change you know, their values. Um, and get you know get different effects however because i want something that's basically stylized i want to try and do something that is kind of not using not starting from you know some, not something that's so noisy um, and it's probably not worth me trying to fix it so uh, let me delete that so we're just back to having a black mask again what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click on here and i'm going to say add generator and if you look in the properties for this generator, because it's empty at the moment, there's no generator selected. So if you click on this, it will basically give you some options for what you can do. And you can get more of these online um, if you want. But the one I'm going to use is this one here, which is the mask editor. Um, and what the mask editor basically does is it allows you to access all of these materials in here or these uh, maps in here and basically tweak them um, to get to build your own mask that behaves in the way you want and and it's the main thing I wanted to show because I think it's really really powerful but I don't know if necessarily lots of people really use it they kind of just rely on you know what these other things these automated things are doing but this is really really cool so so it actually has something to begin with which is a bit of curvature and a bit of ambient occlusion, I think, um, to kind of make the 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 to to give you an idea of what this is supposed to look like. Now, if I just click on to to make it nice and easy for us, um, I'm going to cl click Alt and left click onto here, so we can actually see the mask. Um, so remember, black is see through, white is see you know completely opaque. So that gives us an idea of like the effect we're trying to create. So what we want to do is we want to create something that basically sort of sits on the planes, uh, maybe attacks some of the some of the edges, but basically like runs across the flat surfaces. So I'm going to try and do that with curvature. Um, so if I go into the mask editor, uh, I'm going to push the curvature up. And I'm going to then, if I want to get access it, I'm going to go and open it up. And there's a bunch of stuff in here. And I mean, there's no point going over loads of this stuff, but you can invert, you can change its blending mode. Um, you can change, this is probably more important. You can change whether the curvature is focusing on the edges or focusing on the cavities, um, which is the one we're probably going to use. Um, or whether it's going to focus on both, uh, which is crazy looking, or the option of options unprocessed, where it's just not, not has no focus whatsoever. It's just using the map as it is. At least I believe that's what that's what that means, um, which is quite nice as well. Um, so if we go back to so this is just to get where the placement is. This isn't to get the actual effect. Um, we're going to use different tools to get the effect. All we're really worried about is the placement. Um, so I'm going to go back to the uh, cavities one because uh, I think that's probably a good start. Um, and I'm just going to uh, drop back out just for a second just to see what it looks like. Um, yeah, so we're getting some kind of build up of this stuff here. Uh, which is quite nice and we can just start to play with some of these values just to sharp it up a little bit it's good to look at all your model uh, just to sense of what's going on so we're getting this stuff happening in here which is quite nice and we're getting lots of it across here which is quite nice um, so let's say we're happy with that 
and I'm not going to spend loads of time just playing with these values because we'll we'll be here all day. Um, then what I want to probably do is I just want to make my want to make this a little bit lighter. So it's just a bit more obvious on the video what we're actually doing. Um, so what we're doing is we're getting collections of almost like wear or something like that, or bits that are tarnished or whatever. Basically creating a bit of variation across the surface. But obviously this is really, really soft uh, at the moment, and that's probably not what we actually want. What we actually want is we want something that's got a bit more, like it looks like it's painted a bit more, it's got a bit more texture. Um, so uh, if we go back to our metal original one, uh, let's switch this off back to here. Uh, what you'll see is under here, we have this on top, which is a warp. So if you look at the the grey I've got here, so it's covering this area here, as soon as I switch this on, then we start to get this effect where it feels like it's starting to you know break the surface up. And that's because we're using a warp to basically warp what's been what's underneath. Then on top of that I'm using a sharpen and it's the sharpen that basically gives it the you know, the, 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 the tightens it up and gives it more kind of you know um, makes it a bit rougher looking. Um so I'm gonna set the same thing up here. Uh, let's get those back in fact may as well leave those on. Uh, so I'm just gonna switch my metal off again, go to up to metal two and in this yeah, so you can't see them here, but if I click on the the mask, then you can see them because I can basically I can put filters into here as well, and I can put filters into here. It's weird. It's it's a lot like Photoshop. It's really like Photoshop Substance Painter, apart from it just seems that it does have a lot of like little extra things, um, which we'll cover I'm sure as as we go through these things. But this this being one of them, and um, so the mask has its own ways of ways of working so in here I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a filter and it works the same way same as we did with the, the putting the generator in we put a filter in we get up in the properties panel no filter selected so if we click on here there's a bunch of filters in here they're also here if you want to ever some of these you can drag straight across and pop into those and there's a couple this on chart mask and stuff we'll do that with um, but so you could you could pull them from here just as easy. Uh, in fact, we we will do. Uh, so the one we want is warp, which is this one here. And if we drop it into there, then uh, that's what we get. So let's warp. So we're going to use a thousand for the intensity divider. We're basically going to push the intensity. So let's push it a little bit more than I probably would have done on the other one, just to show what it's doing. So there you go. You can see it's actually starting to give us that, that kind of effect. Um, these values just basically change the way it works. Um, let's, I'm going to stick with something like that, because um, I think that's given us enough in terms of range. Um, and then what I'm going to do on top of that is I'm going to go to Add, and I'm going to add another filter on top and it's it respects the stack so it's like Photoshop it takes the thing on the bottom and you add the thing on top and you add the thing on top of that and that's how that's how the way it works um, so on this filter I'm going to go in this way this time I'm going to add a sharpen uh, which is there so let's stick that sharpen on top and let's have a play with that Remember the resolution we're working at, we'll be able to improve all of this stuff once we go up to uh, 4K, so I'm not going to worry too much about about that. Um, but you can see already that's actually starting to have you know, an effect. Now, what we do from this point onwards, and this is where you can basically lose about a million hours in substance, is you can kind of leave this for now and just say, well, that's more or less where I need it to be, and I'm going to come back and tweak it at the end, or you can start just tweaking this stuff. So if I go back down the bottom of this stack, I can start playing <laughs> with you know, the amount of curvature that we use, and it will 
update, although it's dead slow here because um, well, because it's my computer's dead slow. But you can see that it's 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 having an effect on on it at that level, which is then being affected by the warp. You know, and if I affect the warp here, um, it's being affected by the sharpen. So I could pull this back a bit or push this a little bit more. And then also on my sharpen, you know, I can push it or pull it. So you can do a lot. I'm going to leave it for now because I'm just going to say, yeah, that's fine. But obviously you could do a lot more. I'm going to reverse the, the way this works because I do like it the other way better, I think. I want this to be a bit shinier. And I want the bit underneath to be less shiny. Yeah, I think that sells that a little bit better. Okay, so I, I mean that's far from perfect, but you know, you get the idea. Okay, so It's worth saying as well with the roughness, obviously rough, the most rough is at the top, um, it's the, whereas glossiness is the opposite way around. Um, so when you take this into something like Marmoset, you're going to have to invert it. Um, anyway, there we go. So I'm doing a mess in now. I'm just messing. Right, so we got that far. So back into our original metal. So again, uh, let's fire this up. So we got this far. Then what we've got on top of that, is a rust uh, layer. So if you can see, I've basically got like a layer of rust which runs through it. Um, and this has a few things in it if we look in the mask. And again, it's the same setup. If I uh, switch that off, it's literally just brown, um, brown base color. Uh, and this one is not metallic because rust is not it has no it doesn't have the same dielectric principles or properties sorry of uh, of, of metal so um, even though it's attached to metal it doesn't in in the the parameters of how we describe metal it's not a metal um, so you have to switch the metallic off and you set the roughness high because if you imagine it's basically it's really rough so the light diffuses across it really well and uh, if I get back onto that onto the map then the map or the mask uh, it's set up exactly the same way you can see here I've got this set to 88 so this isn't at full uh, isn't a full opacity and um, so this is another way that you can control uh, what you've got one of the big things you want to try and do here is you want to try and f you need to find ways to blend things so that they feel like they all belong together and have it, a lot of the time having things just sat at 100 percent sat on the top of stuff doesn't necessarily do that so it's quite a nice trick to just basically pull some of these things down so just a little bit of what's underneath comes through especially if there's a lot of color variation in it or create variation in the thing you're making as well it doesn't work for everything but for something like rust it should work quite well um, so I've got a few things going on in here. The first one being I've got another mass builder. Uh, in this mass builder, again, I think I'm using uh, curvature and for the main thing, and I've not got it all the way, um, but I'm basically doing more or less similar thing to what I did last time. I think uh, we can try and build the same thing. I think this time I'm using um, edges rather than uh, and I'm probably not actually, I'm probably using cavities exactly the same. Cavities, yeah. So you can see that I'm just basically doing similar kind of things. There's probably no point going over that in great detail. What I might do actually with the rust on this one is I might try it a slightly different way uh, to show how it works. Um, I then have a paint layer on top. And the paint layer was basically to just um, add a bit of... Uh, a bit of remove some bits that I didn't want, add some, add some, um, you know, edges and bits onto it and extra bits on, because I think these were coming out a little bit 
um, like there was, they had a gradient on them and they were just sort of like smoothly transitioning out into the metal and that isn't really how rust works so I basically added a paint layer on top. Great thing about the paint layers is they're basically non-destructive so um, you can um, you can paint away and then if you don't like what you've done you can just delete it and then I added a sharpen on top just to brace it, basically bring this you know harder edge back because rust tends to transition a bit more like that. Um, so I'm going to try a similar kind of thing, um, although I might use a smart mask uh, just to show them uh, if you've never done them before. So let's go into, uh, let's switch that off, let's open Metal 2 up. So I want to create, so I've created my um, two metal layers, I want to create a new layer. Uh, so I'm going to uh, add a fill layer. Which is put down there, which is not very helpful. And I'm going to stick it in there. So that's in between the two. And then I'm going to make this um, so I don't want height, uh, I don't want a non map, I do want roughness, I want metal, I want uh, colour. And, and the reason why I want metal is because. Um, if you imagine this working like a stack, then if I don't have the metal, in fact I can show you, I'll switch it off, and uh, you can see it, the metal from underneath is coming through. So the metal from this is coming through onto this layer because I'm not specifying that it's not metal, I'm just not specifying that channel. So what it'll do is it'll just pick from the channel underneath, it, it works like a proper stack. So if I make this, hang on, let's get out of there, if I make this like, um, some kind of brown colour. You know, this doesn't look like rust, does it? So, um, and if I set, even if I set it to being totally rough, it's still not right. However, if I add a metalness channel, and then basically don't make it metallic, um, set my roughness right up then I can actually pick something that's a bit more that could be could be rust. The great thing about that is I can change that anyway at any point. So same as before, um, I'm going to add a black mask. Let's just rename this. I'm not naming anything as I go along, but let's start rust. Um, and then here, so let's add a uh, let's add a generator and within that I'm going to do a mass builder and probably already we're getting something closer to what we actually want so within curvature um, I'm going to switch it to cavities uh, and I'm going to uh, Right, so I messed about a lot with um, ambient inclusion and all sorts of stuff. I wanted to basically wanted to try and get something that just didn't do exactly the same thing as the thing underneath it. Um, so I wanted to focus more on these areas. I want to take out the bits that are in the cracks more if I can. Because I've inverted it, I have to go the opposite way. But I suppose that's where I can use the paint layer. So let's go with something like that just to. Going to show what it's like. So I've got, you know, I've got some rust. Then 
what I can do is I basically can go in and um, I set the two things up that I want to do, which is I want to create a paint layer and then I want to um, add a filter on top and that filter is going to be a sharpen if I can select it. Um, and the reason why I'm doing both together is that if I set my sharpen up now, um, it basically means I'll draw something which is sharper. If I use the paint tools, I'll end up with something which is a bit softer and a bit kind of more doughy, no matter how you know how much I add um, you know add, add a hard surface, it doesn't come through as hard. But if I have the sharpen on top, then essentially it will always be it'll be fairly sharp anyway what it does and I can play with that value so in the paint layer basically what I want to do is I want to be able to paint um, some of this detail out um, so if I have it set to white which is here I'm on I'm on the brushes I'm on the paint I'm on the paint tool I picked a brush I'm gonna go with mold because it has this kind of pattern in it which kind of hopefully will work well with rust um, and if I it's same as Photoshop if I use the brackets keys I can go in and out um, and I'm essentially uh, going to hit X to start with black to paint this stuff out I'm more or less just going to go around and start to try and get rid of it I just wanted to show what it looked like so if I get if I get to here to get some of this out um, without sharpen it looks like that which is okay if I add sharpen and then set the sharpen up how I want so I don't want it quite as intense as that just to pull some of that out that's it then essentially now I can sit and go around and paint this stuff out quite happily wherever I want to go basically you know try and make the rust look a bit more like it's actually been painted there um, and it doesn't just totally mirror you're going to get these odd little bits of seams and stuff like that from the, the way the masks generate um, you probably want to go back and fix those as well um, we'll look at those when I look at the gold one yeah, because we will have a problem with that basically you can go around and do that to fix to make your rust look better um, and get rid of the bits you don't want and if you want to add any back in just hit X to get white and you can paint it back in I'm going to show you off off here somewhere if I paint this here so the cool thing about that is that essentially I can switch this paint layer off and the mask is still there and um, so I can change the mask and it will respect the paint layer as well so it's pretty cool and if I don't want that I can switch it off or delete it then that's fine right let's just get rid of that I don't want it say we're happy with that then Yeah, that's what we'll go with. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push this rust down about eighty percent, and we now have you know metal with a bit of rust in, and yeah, it's all starting to come together. Okay, so I realise this is turning into a long, long tutorial just to make metal. Um, so the last thing on there are the edges. Uh, so the edges are probably another candidate for using a smart mask so it might work on, on that this time uh, so we could give that a whirl but basically what we want to do is a bit like in our image here we want to create this sort of like lighter um, edge highlight where whatever it's meant to be um, across the surface so let's do that by uh, creating a new material a new fill layer um, that is uh, in the wrong 
one. So let's stick this right on the top, so above the rust. And let's make it metallic. And let's make it not very rough at all. It kind of get a bit of shine off it. And let's add a black mask. And let's try one of these again. I'm determined to get one of these that, that we can actually use. So let's go to smart masks and let's go to uh, let's have a look. Let's try Edge's Uber. That doesn't work. Nothing will work. Okay, so we've got something here we could maybe work with. Right, so the first thing we'll do is we're going to turn that down a little bit. A bit of the other stuff comes through. And then let's click onto here and see if we can do something with it. So within this generator, you can see this is just a normal mask generator, mask editor generator. It's just had some uh, things added. So this is set to one, which basically means it's using a texture. Um, and curvature is set to one, which basically means it's using curvature. All the other ones are set to zero, which basically means they're not active. Um, so the texture, if we switch the texture off, basically this is what the curvature is doing, um, which is pretty cool, actually and not a million miles away from what we probably want. So let's work on the basis of trying to fix that bit first. So it's probably a bit too heavy and a bit too doughy at the minute. Uh, so let's go into curvature. It's The mode is edges, so it's basically selecting the edges. Um, let's take the softness down. And then what we'll do with this is we'll just switch this texture back on and see what it does. So uh, yeah, it's eroded quite a lot of it, but that's quite cool. So let's just have a quick look in the mask and see what's going on. So if I Alt click on the mask, we can kind of see it. Um, let's have a look. So no texture, bit of texture, loads of texture. So this texture, where's this texture coming from? Well, it's basically down here. So at the bottom in here, you've got image out inputs. Uh, so if you open this up, you can see there's the option to put two textures in. Um, so we've got this texture here, which is this grunge marble shapes. Um, you can use grunges or procedurals, anywhere, any of these from here, you could just take and you can shove in there and you get a different result. Um, so let's just turn the texture back up to full and as you can see within here if I just drop in something like creased um, and then start to play with some of these values you get a, you see how it's getting like a, a general thing going across the top Changing the contrast, I probably didn't pick the best example, but you can see you can get some bigger breaks there, something like that. If I pick um, a crystal, maybe, uh, or cells, yeah, you see you get loads of cracks across it. Um, so you could get quite interesting effects, and you can play, you can play with these values size of them things like that and um, a lot of these because these are procedural the, the the you can change you can change the seed you can do all sorts of stuff you can make them completely random and your grunges uh, you can just drop in you know 
stuff that's just basically generally a bit a bit a bit scruffy and a bit just to break up the lines a bit more and again with all these you can change you know how they work so in our case we probably don't want to do too much we we'll kind of want to preserve the line because so it looks like it's been painted almost maybe just put some of that smaller stuff away it's quite interesting so if you look back on the material And maybe actually go back to the curvature again as you see this is just basically sort of I get a little bit extra there for free just by pulling that up I don't want it there I guess um, maybe just most things up a little bit more so we just get a bit of thickness into them it just feels a bit more stylized and then probably actually just pull the whole thing up a little bit so um it's very it's not showing itself off very well there at the minute there we go so, so maybe something like that for now i'm not going to play with it too much because we'll be here all year and um, you can do quite a lot um and again you can do whatever you want on top of this um, so in the original one, I think, yeah, I've got sharpen on top, so you could do the same thing um, just easily, but you, you kind of know how to do that now, so there's no point worrying about that too much. Um, but yeah, there you go. Um, so the next thing in this list is uh, a gradient. Okay, so these are a fairly common thing. Uh, using gradients in stylized work basically it's a way of grounding the material and kind of creating some subtle gradients again it's one of these things where what we're trying to do is trying to sort of unify all these things and make them look like they're all made together and um, so a gradient can really help with that uh, there are different ways to make gradients uh, the probably the there is actually a gradient tool but i don't really i really struggle with it and um, so the easiest way is to basically do it this way, I think anyway. I'm just going to switch my metal 2 off and get back to my original metal. Uh, and it's here. Oh, and so you can see the effect of it. Basically, what it's doing is if I uh, hold Alt and look at the. The mask is basically doing this where white is the bit you can see and black is the bit you can't see um, so it's not a white gradient it's actually this is the opposite of what it actually is because I'm using a color and the color I'm using is dark um, and I've got it set to multiply so like you do in Photoshop uh, you know you can set let's just turn this up a bit so you can see it you can set um, so this color could be anything let's say it's something ridiculous you can see what it's doing pink okay so there's my gradient yeah so basically what I'm doing is I'm basically using this color and I'm using a mask to basically make it go from red through to nothing and in the case of what I did is from dark through to nothing so dark through to light um, but let's keep the red for now so we can see how it works um, so the gradient is basically again using the using the mask editor and uh, so i just opened it up as i did before but i'm not using curvature this time what i'm using is i'm using the position gradient so what we've got in here is we've got a position map and what the position map does is basically um allows you to it, it essentially gives you gradients of uh which allow you to determine what plane you're looking at so whether you're looking at the top or the bottom or the left or the right that type of thing and it just puts them into this mask so we can actually use them to determine where the top and the bottom of our object is and how this how stuff should behave 
Uh, so if I go into the position gradient and we have a look at it, then essentially I've got these these control how the gradient behaves. So I could just maybe just make the the bottom, you know, and change the level of contrast so that it receives a lot less. It's only the bottom getting it. So we go for something like that, and then change the brightness overall. So there we're getting nothing. Basically, just darkness. We'll get the red up to here, and then nothing else. So that controls that stuff. You've got your blending mode. You can set it to invert so that I've got red at the top and a lot less at the bottom. Um, and you can set where you want the gradient to come from. So in this case, I'm using top to bottom set to one. So if I turn this down, then it's not using the top to bottom. But if I wanted to do it from right to left, then I could get it to do that. Uh, or front to back. And obviously if you want them to do the other way, you can invert them. Um, so they're pretty, I mean, that's it's pretty straightforward really, isn't it? Um, I don't think there's really much more needs to be said on that. Uh, so I have top to bottom set. And if we go back to, say I leave it like that, let's... Let's get it to about there. That's fine. Then, essentially, if I go now set this gradient to be the color, something close to what it needs to be. So I had it sort of like a dark, really dark, dark grayish blue. Then it looks a bit odd here, but if I set that to multiply, so which works just the same way as it would do in Photoshop and then just pull the gradient back a bit what we end up with is something which is essentially a bit darker at the bottom a bit more grounded and then lighter at the top uh, so it's quite subtle but I basically I've put that across virtually everything I've just duplicated it and then reset it up so that's just a gradient um, so probably if I in fact could do that just with this so if I just uh, duplicate the layer in fact now let's do it because I want to move it duplicate just puts the layer right next to it which is useful but that's not what I want to do so just copy layer control C and then um, get to about here and then I'll control V I'll drop it in so I basically got my gradient on my metal 2 uh, switch metal off and you can see it's working there. So we've basically got our basis for our stylized metal, um, which we'll complete when we get everything together, but it's a good starting point. So.